Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Chain Link. This is a pattern designed by Deb Grogan from the Quilt Factory, and it's what she calls a Fab Five pattern. And what that means is you need one yard of five different prints. So I pulled out five fabrics I like in a coral group here, and I thought I was going to use those, but then I found this really nice blue group. So basically what you need is two darks and two lights and then one for the outside border which could be light or dark or even mixed. The first thing we're going to do is iron each yard nice and flat because then we can get nice accurate cuts and our patchwork will look a lot better. So at this point we're going to set aside the one fabric that's going to be used for the border and then we're going to work with our two lights and two darks. Now all of these are going to get cut exactly the same way and I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern but I've made quite a few from the quilt factory and they're very easy to follow. The cutting was really easy and it's all done. Now this, this pattern refers to each fabric with a letter. So we've got A, B, C, D, E. So I just took some scraps and put a little sticker on there so that I won't get confused when I'm making the quilt. Now we're going to take these light squares here and on the back side of them, we are going to draw diagonal lines. So we're gonna go from corner to corner. So I'm just gonna take my straight edge here and I like to use just a regular pencil and draw a real light line there. Then turn it this way. Same thing. So go ahead and mark the back of all of the light squares. Once those are all marked, I'm gonna to head to the machine with the A and the D squares. I'm gonna take one of each and put them right sides together line them up and we're going to stitch on both sides of this first line here quarter inch away my presser foot is a quarter inch wide so i can just put the edge of my foot right on the line there and i'm just going to spin it around and now go down the other side Now we're going to do the same thing on both sides of this line. Now we're going to take this back to the cutting board. I'm actually going to iron this a little bit to make sure that it's nice and flat. Sometimes when you're stitching, it might become a little bit ripply. Now put this back on your cutting board and I'm gonna line it up with the lines that are on the board and I'm gonna cut it in half both ways. So I'm gonna put this right here and leave it right there. Now I'm gonna turn my ruler, cut it in half this way. And again, don't move anything. Now we're gonna cut along both drawn lines. And what we are making is half square triangles. It's like magic. We've got eight half square triangles all at once. Now we want to iron all of these with the seam allowance going towards the dark print. So the easiest way to do that is to put the light fabric down on your ironing board and then peel that dark one open. And I kind of press it with my hands and I'm making sure that I've got a straight line there and I'm not curving it as I open it. 
use a dry iron and then a little steam and then trim off these dog ears. And the easiest way is just to have a pair of scissors right here at the ironing board. So go ahead and do that with all of your A and D blocks. Once those are done, we're going to do the exact same thing with our C and E fabrics, but these seam allowances are going to get ironed toward the light. Now we're going to work with the strips that we cut earlier. So take one of each fabric and head over to the machine. Now here is why it's nice to have put these labels on because I wouldn't remember which fabric went where. The pattern tells you to make D, C, A, E in that order. And with those labels, I won't get mixed up. So let's get our D and C is going to go next to it. So I'm just gonna sew these two together along one long edge here, quarter inch seam, being careful not to stretch either one of the fabrics. If you're worried you might stretch, you can pin along here first and just stitch all the way down. Now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to finger press the seam allowance to that side. So all I'm doing is opening this with the palms of my hand and drawing my finger down the seam. You can use your fingernail, you can use the pad of your finger, but as long as you are opening this up and pressing down there, it works really well. Now we are going to get to the A strip and we're gonna add it over on this side over here. Same method, just stitch down with a quarter inch seam. So there's the A strip. The seam allowance is gonna get pressed in exactly the same direction as the first one. And this one again. Finger press it to the right. And now I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and I am going to press it with the iron so that it's nice and flat. So smooth it out on your ironing board. And then iron it. Again, I like to use a dry iron first and then steam it. Now we're going to subcut the strip unit, so be sure you get it nice and straight on one of the lines on your cutting board. And be sure to double check the pattern to make sure you are doing your subcutting the right measurement. So just stitch up the rest of your strips into strip units and keep subcutting till you've got everything cut up into these nice pieced units. Now we're almost ready to put our blocks together. The block that makes the whole quilt. There's only one block. But before we do that, we've got one more step. Some patterns, when you make half square triangles, have you make them to an exact size. And other patterns, like this one, they have you make them a little bit oversized and then you trim them down so they're exactly the size you need. So be sure to double check and trim off the little bit excess that you might have on your block. Here's what we need for each block. We need two of these strip units and four of each of the half square triangles. And we're just gonna make half the block at a time. So let's put the strip unit there. And then we're gonna take these two half square triangles and we're gonna make a diagonal line that's going right into that same print there. Then we'll take two of these and it's just a mirror image. So let's sew this into a row first. So I'm gonna put these right sides together, stitch down here, just keep adding the pieces. Now 
And then that last piece. Now, on our strip unit, all of these seam allowances are going that way. So all we have to do with this is make sure all the seam allowances are pressed the other way. So I'm just going to finger press them. Now we can put these two rows together and everything will nest. So the seam allowances, see they're going in opposite directions. So that makes it really easy to match those intersections. Now we're going to make a second one exactly the same way, exactly the same layout. And stitch it together exactly the same way. So there it is, exactly the same block, but we are going to turn it around and stitch them together. And because all the seams are again going in opposite directions, it's going to be real easy to match those intersections. Very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of those all stitched up. I've got all 20 blocks made. They're all exactly the same, and it's really easy to lay the quilt out. These are just going to go in rows like this. So this is what's making it look like a chain link fence. And if you simply take the next row and turn it around, the block looks the same, but now I've got my seam allowances going in opposite directions. So all these seams when I did the rows, they were all facing one way. So if I just turn this around, now they're all facing the opposite direction. So when we sew all these, they'll nest and it'll be really easy to match everything up. There, very easy to lay out. It's gonna be very easy to stitch it together. And the last thing I have to do then is take the B fabric that we had set aside and that's going to be a four and a half inch border. And that's going to go all the way around the outside. Then we can get this on the quilting machine. I've got the quilt on the machine. And now we need to pick a thread color. Any of these really light colored threads are going to work. If you wanted your thread a little more prominent, this kind of light taupe, you know, it's not going to show much. But it'll show a little bit more on the blue than this one will. This one is going to blend in on the blue, on the background. Now this is about the exact same color that we've got in the patchwork. Let's see if that shows. It's still not going to show much, but I really think blue is the best choice for this quilt. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use this called Simply Roses. I like the fact that you can see the separate roses, and I think that will look really good on the patchwork. I've got the chain link quilt all done. This was a very quick project and I love how calm the pattern is. You can see those chain links going down the design, going down the quilt here. The backgrounds are very close in color, 
but it gives it just a little bit of interest to have them slightly different. Same thing with the blue fabrics. They're very similar in the background color and that's what makes this pattern work is having calm, subdued colors that are similar here. Now on the back, you can't see the quilting very well, but you can see some little roses there. I really like having the pattern show on the back for the quilting. So it turned out 56 by 68. And since we used one yard each of five different prints, it would be extremely easy to make this larger. Just get two yards each and you can make it twice as big. Thanks for watching our tutorial today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, before we're done, we're gonna have a giveaway. It may not seem like it, but Christmas is coming pretty quickly here. And so we decided to give away a Christmas quilt. And this way, if you win it, you've got time to get it to your house and display it somewhere, put it on your couch, hang it on the wall, put it on the bed. So this pattern is called Hugs and Kisses. It's got all these nice Christmas blossom prints in it. Really nice holly pine cones on the backside. So it's very, very easy to enter our giveaways. All you do is click the link right below the video that says giveaway, and you just need to put in your email address and your name. And remember, if you win, we can send this to you anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.